Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh One, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about the Imperium of Man as we get into the fortifications of the Imperium of Man. Now this is going to be just a broad range uh, lore video, so we're not going into the specifics of the Aegis Defense Line or any other type of fortification. We're just giving you the broad sense of the fortification power of the Imperium, which they need now that chaos is becoming stronger it seems. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, because we post Warhammer 40k content every single day. And um, if, you're, if you're not new to the channel, suggest or put down a request for videos that you guys would like to see. Please put that in the comment section below. But with that said, let's get into 40 facts about the defenses of the Imperium. As darkness deepens across the galaxy, every world of the Imperium finds itself besieged. It's such a dire time. The importance of solid walls and tireless guns is greater than ever. The fortresses and strongholds of the Imperium are night impregnable and bristling with defensive weaponry. The tides of heretics and Xeno armies break against them like serfs on shore. Upon the ornate cartologists of the Adeptus Terra, the Emperor's realm appears as a unified fastness fancifully illuminated with gothic flourishes and proud aquilas. Commanders and savants casting their gaze over these mile-wide star maps would be forgiven for envisioning mankind stood shoulder to shoulder across the stars, a resolute wall of faith against which the most tireless of their numerous foe must surely dash themselves to ruin. Sadly for humanity, the reality is rather different. The Imperium is immense, but it is also scattered. Many Imperial star systems are virtually isolated by distance and the turbulent channels of the warp. Rather than a unified whole, the Imperium is more akin to a thousands of vessel nations linked only by their faith and surrounded on all sides by dangerous darkness of the void. Conscious of the terrors that may fall upon them at any moment, all but the most neglectful of Imperial governors raise fortifications and planetary defense garrisons. So have the Emperor's worlds ever looked at their own defense in the face of piratical raids, Xenos invasions, or the nefarious and sinister attentions of heretics. With the coming of the Great Rift, such defenses have become more crucial than ever before. The deranged servants of chaos spill from the warp in endless waves, battering at the Imperial defenses in an endless frenzied assault. Xenos incursions become ever more common as alien races prey upon weakened worlds, or else flee en masse from the coming of yet worse things on their backs. Madness, heresy, and despair run rife, leading worlds after world down the dark road to insurrection and civil war. Faced with such threats, the warriors of the Imperium gather behind their defenses, fighting to repel wave after wave of pitiless attackers even as their engineers and castellans shore up the barricades and raise monolithic new fortresses to hold back the foe. For many imperial strongholds, it has become an endless, grinding siege in which victory is simply survival, and defense must be raised as swiftly as they are brought crashing down. Fortunately, for the maraud worlds of the Imperium, the standard template defensive structure raised for their protections are mighty indeed. Built from plasteel and reinforced ferrocreek, wreaths in crackling force fields and clouds of blessed incense, the fortifications of the Imperium stand inviolate against any who would see their inhabitants slaughtered. Many boast in placed heavy weaponry, murderous guns fed from armored hoppers and directed either by the warriors sheltering within the fortification or else by servitor brain components and auto-targeting machine spirits wired directly into the weapons themselves. To advance upon such towering bastions is to face the wall of overlapping firepower that makes a mockery of cover. Victims are channeled into carefully calculated killing grounds where tanks are reduced to a smoldering wreckage and soldiers to bullet-riddled corpses. Simplest of these defenses are the prefabricated barricades of the Aegis defense line and the core shore trench networks of the Wall of Martyrs. In both cases, such obstructions give shelter to infantrymen 
artillery teams, and the like that hunker behind them and reinforce structures durable enough to shrug off but the most ferocious enemy fire. Imperial engineers or Adeptus Mechanicus servitors can raise such defenses with swift efficiency. On many Imperial war fronts, these barricades and trench lines can stretch back for miles and miles, deployed in layers that reach back from the front, spreading out from the larger fortifications like crackled webs. Bunkers and bastions are also common sights on many Imperial worlds, their stark silhouettes rising over lurking minefields and rusting nests of razor wire. Whether they be lone fortifications, raised to guard outlying highways and passes, or networks of towers and bunkers constructed by the dozens around crucial strategic assets, these slab-side fastnesses offer protection to Imperial soldiers and death to their foe. Fire support elements such as Space Marine Devastators and Astra Militarum Heavy Weapon Squads often favor Imperial Bastions, making the most of their improved protection and commanding sightline, while officers and command sections regularly quarter themselves in Imperial Bunkers, where they can spread out maps and charts and endure the worst bombardments that the foe can hurl their way. The armies of the Imperium also deploy larger and rarer fortifications, many being airdropped into war zones in prefabricated sections to allow for swift assembly and auto sanctification. Firestorm rebounds and Vengeance weapon batteries provide heavy firepower as well as armored durability. Their guns blast enemy aircraft from the sky and mow down the infantry and armor of the foe with an array of servitor guided guns. Vast weapons emplacements such as the Plasma Obliterator and the Macro Cannon Aquila Strongpoint dominate battlefields, unleashing firepower of a magnitude that hurls titans from their feet, or punching shots up through the atmosphere to tear the guts from enemy spacecraft. Most terrifying of all is the Vortex Missile Aquila Strongpoint, whose intercontinental empiric destabilization warheads are fired only as a last resort to unleash the unbound fury of the warp upon the foe. Finally, there are those structures that provide exceptional support to defensive armies. Void shield generators use arcane and ineffectible technologies to project thrumming force fields that ward away incoming firepower and render nearby friendly warriors volatile to harm. Meanwhile, sky shield landing pads provide forward staging posts for squadrons of Imperial aircraft allowing them to land, repair, refuel, and rearm without needing to return to the Imperial rear line or orbiting spacecraft. This extends the range of such aerial assets enormously, while in extremes, the armored barricades that ring the landing pads can be raised, providing protection to craft and defenders alike, should the enemy forces break through and attack. And those were 40 facts on the fortifications of the Imperium. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm probably going to do a part 2 where I go into the individual fortifications themselves. Comment d down below if you guys um, are interested in that. If not, give me any suggestion or request of other topics of Warhammer 40k that you guys would like us to create a video about. Now, if you like what we do, you like these videos, please share them with your friends on Facebook and Twitter. It really helps out the channel when you get the message of One Mind Syndicate and the lore of Warhammer 40k out there. Uh, if you want your friends to start playing 40k again, the best way to do it is to send them videos of lore or news from the Warhammer community. Uh, so do that on Facebook and Twitter. If you receive this from a friend as a post or something, uh, he wants you to play Warhammer 40k again. So uh, get back on it. Dust off that army and get into 8th edition. Uh, again, guys, thank you so much for liking, commenting, and sharing. If you want to support us a little bit more, jump on over to Patreon. A simple dollar a month helps us create more videos for you. Uh, with that said, I'll see you tomorrow. This is Gershwin with One Mind Syndicate, signing out. Oh,